In Ableton Live 12.1, Ableton introduced a new sample-based instrument called Drum Sampler. And in this video, I wanna take a look at Drum Sampler and compare it to Ableton Live's other primary sample-based instrument, Simpler, and show you how they compare and why you might choose to use one over the other. Now, I'm not gonna talk about Sampler in this video, which is Ableton Live's other main sample-based instrument because it's a bit of a different beast. However, if you do wanna learn about how Sampler compares to, say, Simpler, I do have a video that goes through all that, which I'll link in a card above as well as in the description below. But for now, let's take a look at how Drum Sampler compares to Simpler. So first up, both Simpler and Drum Sampler are only able to work with a single sample, which means you can only load up one audio file in either of these. Beyond that though, the two instruments are actually somewhat different. For instance, Drum Sampler can only play back this sample monophonically, meaning it can only play back one sample, a single note at a time. whereas Simpler can actually play back a single sample polyphonically, meaning it can play more than a single note at once of the same sample. So this means with Simpler, you can actually turn a single sample into a polyphonic sound that allows you to play chords or just more than a single note at the same time. Now this makes sense because as the name suggests, Drum Sampler is primarily designed to work with drum samples and this influences the entirety of its feature set from the ground up. So let's start by taking a look at the amplitude envelope controls of Drum Sampler and comparing it to those of Simpler. So in Drum Sampler, we have some fairly limited amplitude envelope controls. We have an attack control, hold control, and decay control, as well as the ability to switch between two different modes, the trigger mode and the gate mode. Now, I know that I said Drum Sampler is designed to primarily work with drum samples, but to showcase the effects of these amplitude envelopes, I'm gonna use this vocal sample that I used in the beginning of the video. So in trigger mode, this amplitude envelope will play from start to finish going through each of these different stages, the attack stage, the hold stage, and the decay stage, with the attack stage being how long it takes for the sound to go from absolutely no sound to the maximum level, the hold, how long it's gonna stay at that maximum level, and the decay being how long it's gonna to take to go from that maximum level all the way back down to absolutely nothing. Ooh, ooh. You'll see there that as I trigger a new note, the envelope is restarted from the start of the sample in trigger mode. Now you'll notice that when I switch the mode to gate mode, we actually lose the hold control. And why this is, is because the attack and decay control now function in exactly the same way, except the hold time is now dictated by how long we hold down a note for. So for instance, if I hold down a note for a really short amount of time, basically no hold, versus if I hold down a note for a really long time, we can have the sound play out for longer. In other words, the hold time here is now controlled by the length of the MIDI note. This is as opposed to Simpler, which has a much more robust set of features and controls when it comes to the amplitude envelope of the sound. Now, much like Drum Sampler, Simpler actually has two main playback modes. We have the classic mode and the one-shot mode. We also have the slice mode, but that's very different to either of these two main modes, which are primarily more similar to how Drum Sampler works. No, don't. No, no, we need, no, please don't. Mm. Uh. In classic mode, we have access to a traditional attack, decay, sustain, release, or ADSR envelope, which allows us to control the amplitude of a sound in four stages. We get access to these controls here in the bottom, attack, decay, sustain, release, and we also get access to these controls in the controls tab if I click on the amplitude envelope option right here. And by default, of course, the ADSR envelope always reacts to the length of the incoming MIDI note. Mm. Now we do also get access to a bunch more different ways that we can have this amplitude envelope react inside of this classic mode. For instance, we can go up to the top here where it says mode and where it says none, I can click on this drop down menu and select a bunch of different options. For instance, trigger, which reacts very similarly to the trigger mode in the drum sampler. in that it will run through the entirety of the amplitude envelope, but there's just no hold time control. The other modes are also a lot of fun to play around with and allow us to loop different segments of this ADSR envelope, but that's for another video. Let's go back to the sample tab and now check out one shot mode, which allows us to, when we play a note, play through the entirety of the sample from the start to the end point. Ooh. 
regardless of how long we hold the note down for. And in this way, it acts again, very similarly to the trigger mode of drum sampler. And you can even see here that in the one shot mode down the bottom, we actually have access to, again, two different types of modes. We have trigger and the gate mode. And in gate mode, again, the length of the sound is determined by how long we hold the MIDI note down for. And in one shot mode, instead of having access to a full ADSR envelope, we actually have access to fade in and fade out controls, which basically act like the attack and the decay controls of the drum sampler envelope. Now, something that's not a really big issue in the grand scheme of things, but is worth knowing about, especially if you're a nerd like me, is that Drum Sampler's envelope actually has a minimum attack time of 0.1 milliseconds, whereas in Simpler, the minimum attack time is actually 0.0 milliseconds. And although this might not seem like much, it does actually have a very, very, very slight difference on the sound, particularly if you've got a sound with a really, really short click at the start of it, which is pretty common in, say, drum sounds. Now let's talk about sample editing. Both Drum Sampler and Simpler have options inside of the device to allow you to edit the sample for different types of playback. However, once again, Drum Sampler's sample editing capabilities on the device are a lot more limited than, say, Simpler's. In Drum Sampler, we only get access to three different controls to edit the sample. We have access to a start control, which allows us to adjust the start position of the sample. <laughs> a length control, which allows us to adjust the length of the sample based on the start position. So for example, if I start the position here, we can change the length control. And see that reflected in the actual sample editor. And we also get access to a gain control, which allows us to adjust the level of the sample. And this of course happens before any filtering or anything like that. We do also get the ability to zoom in on this sample, although it's a little bit convoluted. If we hold down the shift key whilst adjusting the start time, we can actually zoom in on the sample, but it is a little bit hard to tell still where the start position is. And this is a lot more clunky than say how Simpler's zooming capabilities work. So in the classic mode in Simpler, we still get access to this start, length and gain controls that we find in Drum Sampler. But we also get access to an actual sample start and sample end point with this arrow and line at the beginning of the sample and this arrow and line at the end of the sample. And you'll notice that the start position and the length percentage are actually adjusted relative to these two lines. Then in terms of zooming, I can just hover anywhere over this sample where my mouse turns into this magnifying glass, click and drag up or down, and that will allow me to zoom in and scrub through the sample however I like, and I'm not tied to just looking at where the start position of the sample is. Simpler also gives us the ability to loop the sample here with this option in the classic mode. And then when we turn on that loop option, we get access to things like a loop and fade percentage which is something that Drum Sampler kind of has, but it's in the effects section, which we'll get to later on. Simpler also has access to this snap feature, which allows us to snap the start and end positions of the sample to the zero crossing points to allow us to mitigate any clicks or pops that might occur. Simpler also gives us the ability to warp the sample so that the length of the sample is the same, regardless of the tempo of our session or the pitch that the sample is played back at, which is fantastic for when working with things like loops inside of the device and is also a lot of fun for sound design purposes. Now, both Simpler and Drum Sampler have access to the new similarity swap feature and of course the hot swap feature actually on the device in this sample editor, which is really good for when we wanna try out new samples in that same instrument. For instance, I could search for a similar vocal sample just by clicking this right arrow or swap out this sample for another one by clicking on this hot swap button and finding a new sample from my browser. And of course I get access to these in Drum Sampler as well. If I hover over the sample, we can see these right and left arrows and the little hot swap icon there. Both also have options in a right click context menu when I right click on the sample, such as show in browser, show in finder and the similar samples. However, of course, 
Simpler does have more options, such as the ability to normalize the volumes, crop, and even reverse the sample. Next up, let's take a look at the filter section of both of these devices. In Simpler, we can access and turn on the filter by coming down to this bottom left section and just engaging the button next to filter. Simpler's filter offers us lots of control from different filter types, like a low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and even a morph filter. We also get access to things like the filter slope from 12 dB and 24 dB, different filter types, which allow us to apply drive and saturation to the signal. And if we switch over to the controls tab, we even get the ability to control the filter with things like velocity, key tracking, and even an envelope. Drum Sampler's filter, on the other hand, is much more limited. In Drum Sampler, we can find the filter section just in from the right-hand side of the device where it says filter, and we can engage or disengage this filter section just by clicking that button. We get access to four different types of filters, two different types of low passes, a high pass, and a bell curve EQ, which allows us to boost or reduce the level of a certain frequency range. Beyond this though, the only other thing we can do with the filter is have either the velocity or the slide control the cutoff position or the frequency of this filter. So as we can see, much more limited than the filter inside of Simpler. By the way, if you wanna learn more from me outside of these free YouTube videos, I actually have a monthly membership where you can get access to monthly exclusive videos, live workshops, exclusive samples, and even one-on-one -on -one sessions. You'll find the link to sign up in the description. Or if you're not ready to spend any money on membership, you can sign up for my newsletter where I send out regular tips, tricks, and news on a monthly basis. And you can also join the Discord where you can interact with me and other members of the community and even partake in monthly creative challenges. You'll find links for them in the description as well. So at this point, you're probably thinking that Simpler is just a better version of Drum Sampler and why would you ever use Drum Sampler versus Simpler? Well, now let's get into the thing that Drum Sampler does differently to Simpler and that is the effects section. So you've probably noticed whilst we've been looking at this device, this middle section here where it says effects. And this is an entirely unique section to Drum Sampler that doesn't show up in the Simpler device or basically any other device in Ableton Live for that matter. This effects section allows us to choose from nine different effects, stretch, loop, pitch envelope, punch, 8-bit, FM, ring mod, and sub oscillator and noise. And then gives us very simplified control over each of these different effects with two different macro controls, which can also be controlled on this XY pad. And each of these different effects allow us to alter the sound or the playback of the sample in some way, shape, or form. Let's take a look at a few of them now. Starting off, we have the stretch effect, which allows us to stretch the sample and play it back kind of more granularly. <laughs> which is pretty fun. Next, we have the loop effect, which allows us to basically loop the sample in a similar way to how we do in the simpler device, but with some more limited controls. We have the pitch envelope control, which allows us to add a pitch envelope at the beginning of the sound. We have the punch effect, which is particularly useful for things like drum samples, as it allows us to increase the effect or the level of the transient of the sound relative to the sustain. Next, we have the 8-bit effect. We have the FM effect, which allows us to apply some frequency modulation. The ring mod. The sub oscillator, which allows us to add a lower frequency to the sound, particularly useful for things like kick drums. And then noise, which of course just allows us to add some noise to the sound as well. Now, pretty much every single one of these nine effects can be replicated with default stock Ableton Live devices, but it is nice having these simplified performative controls inbuilt directly into the device if it's something that you want to play around with on the samples that you're using inside of Drum Sampler. Now, the only other thing that Drum Sampler has that Simpler doesn't really have is a very, very, very small little modulation matrix 
I don't even really think you can call it a matrix because it's just the ability to modulate one single parameter with either velocity or slide by coming down to the bottom right hand section, selecting the modulation source, either velocity or slide, and then selecting from a very short list, filter, attack, hold, decay, effects one and effects two, and then having the amount here. So for instance, we could have the velocity affect the first macro of the effects here. So a higher velocity introduces more noise in this particular instance. Now in Simpler, we don't have the ability to map velocity or slide to any parameter inside of the device. However, we do have some pre-mapped destinations for things like velocity and key tracking, such as the filter, which we looked at before. Simpler also has access to an LFO, which we can map to things like the velocity, pitch, panning and the filter of the device. Now, it is worth noting that you can convert a simpler device to a drum sampler device and vice versa. However, there aren't many controls that are carried over between the two devices when you do this. For instance, let's go to our drum sampler device. And if I right click on the title bar, I get the option to go from drum sampler to simpler. And if I click on this, you'll see that that sample is now converted into a simpler device from a drum sampler. You'll see that it's brought over the sample start, length, and gain. However, none of the envelope controls have been brought over. And the only other two controls that I could find that actually transfer when converting from drum sampler to simpler and back again are the volume output of the device and the transposition under the controls section right here. You'll see if I leave that set to negative six, the volume set to say negative one, go back to the sample, we can adjust the start position, the length and the gain. I can now right click on the device title bar of the simpler, convert it to a drum sampler and those particular parameters will be maintained. However, everything else will be set to the default. So now that we understand pretty much every single difference between drum sampler and simpler, why would you choose to use one over the other? Well, to be honest, for the vast majority of use cases, I would personally recommend using simpler over drum sampler. It's much more flexible than drum sampler, does pretty much everything that drum sampler can do and better, and it comes in every single edition of Ableton Live, including Lite, which also drum sampler does as well. So then why and when would I decide to use drum sampler? Pretty much the only instance that I would decide to use drum sampler is if I really wanted to access that little effects section and I wanted to have some more performative control over the sample, which simpler doesn't really give me in regards to those effects. However, in the end, it obviously always comes down to personal preference. So choose the one that you wanna use based on your particular scenario. So if simpler does basically everything that drum sampler does, why does drum sampler even exist in the first place? And well, it's only speculation here, but my thought is because of Ableton Move and Ableton Note, both of which utilize drum sampler instead of simpler for a lot of different use cases. And when you look at the limitations of something like the Ableton Move, you start to understand why drum sampler is much more limited in its functionality and its controls, especially in something like the effects section, which is super fun and playful and performative, but only limited to a few controls, which are utilized on the macros of the Ableton Move. In short, simple Simpler and Drum Sampler have very similar functionality, but Simpler is definitely more featureful and would work well in the vast majority of use cases instead of Drum Sampler. That said, I encourage you to try out both of them so that you can learn exactly how they work and figure out which ones you might want to use in a particular scenario. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn about the differences between Simpler and Sampler, you can check out this video right here. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you all in the next video.